Alright, welcome back. I uh, wanted to first talk about a couple keyboard shortcuts that I forgot to mention in the last video. Um, the first is that uh, Meta C will capitalize uh, whatever word you're on. So if I type Meta C right here, that just capitalizes that word. Uh, to capitalize the entire word, you can do Meta U. And to make the entire word lowercase, you can type meta L. You can do this in the middle of a word too. Um, meta C uh, will capitalize just the this. Meta U will capitalize the entire this. And meta L will downcase the entire this. Um, notice also that if you type meta C, um, it will lowercase everything after what is under your cursor, like that. So um, if I type meta C right here, that is the result. OK. The next thing that I want to talk about is file paths. So there are two ways to specify a file path. And a file path is just a fancy term for the name of a file. You can specify them either uh, using an absolute file path, which uh, is a file path that begins with a forward slash. Or you can use a relative file path, which is a file path that does not begin with a forward slash. Uh, relative file paths are converted into absolute file paths by taking the current working directory and appending a slash forward slash and the relative file path. For example, suppose that I want to ls a uh, directory called slash home slash me. And let's do slash noob to dev. Um, because my current working directory is slash home slash me, I could also simply say ls noob to dev. And as you can see from the output, uh, those two things are almost certainly the same thing. Um, I say almost certainly because you could create two directories uh, that were different, that had the same contents, but hopefully you'll believe that that's not what's happening here. Um, the next thing uh, that I think I should mention is that there are two special uh, sequences that you should know about um, when constructing path file paths. And those are dot and dot dot. So essentially, if there is a uh, just a dot in a file path, it means ignore this file path segment. For example, if I do slash home slash me, slash dot slash noob to dev. That's the same thing, as you can see from the output, as slash home slash me slash noob to dev. Similarly, or maybe not similarly, but you know, related is the double dot. So putting a double dot in a file path means delete both this directory or this segment of the file path and the one before it. So if that's true, this should give the same output as ls slash home, which as you can see it does. And you can use dot and double dot in both relative and absolute path names. 
so ls dot just is, lists the same thing as ls slash home slash me because slash home slash me is the current working directory. And ls double dot lists the same thing as ls slash home. The last thing that I should maybe say before I move on real quick is that two slashes uh, are considered the same thing as one slash when they're right next to each other. So slash home slash slash me gives the same output as slash home slash me. So let's talk about using the shell as a file explorer, because I think that's the easiest way to introduce the shell to someone. Um, what do you need to do in a file explorer? Well, you need to look at files and folders that are in a directory, right? So if you type ls just by itself, it will list the files and folders that are in your current working directory. If you type ls for a directory, uh, like noob to dev is a directory, it'll list the files and folders that are in that directory. <clears throat> if you type ls noob to dev slash readme, which is just a regular file, it will just list that file. If you want ls to just list the directory, then you can give it the dash d flag. Now, why would you want to list something that you know already exists? Well, the reason is you might want to get more information out of it. So if I do ls-l noob to dev readme, then I can have printed out for me a couple of useful things to know. Specifically, uh, the size of the file and the date and time that it was last modified. There are other things in here like who owns the file uh, and what group the file belongs to as well as the permissions of the file. Uh, sometimes though this uh, size number can be a little uh, big because it's just given in bytes. So if you pass the H flag as well, you'll get a human readable form. The last thing that I'll say about ls that is sometimes useful is the i flag. Uh, the i flag shows the inode number of a file or all of the files in a directory if you give it a directory. So if I do ls-i it'll just give me inodes for every file in the current working directory. It is possible to have two different files, or two differently named files that are actually the same file. And that's because uh, the inode number is what actually determines the file's identity. So you can see here we have two separately named files with the same inode number, so these are actually the same file. Um, if we cat other name, we can see that it's an empty file as well as test file, it's an empty file. But if I add hello to other name, it also gets added to test file. Okay, so what if we're gonna be doing a bunch of commands in a directory that we're not currently in? So if I have to specify a bunch of file names, it's a lot easier to specify them if they're in the current working directory because all I have to do is just type the file name, right? So if you want to change your current working directory, you can do that. It's just cd. So if I cd noob to dev, now my current working directory is home slash me slash noob to dev. And if I just type cd with no arguments, it will take me to my home directory. That's pretty much it for cd. The one other thing that I will say is there is the cd dash, 
which will take you to the last directory you were in. Okay, let's talk about renaming files. To rename a file to a new file name, you just do move file new file. So to give you an example, we can move readme to my reading. And now we have my reading in here instead of readme. <clears throat> um, we can undo that by just swapping the order. Okay. So this is the current file name. This is what you want it to be. Uh, you can move files into directories by typing move and then the file name that you want to move and the directory that you want to move it into. So now the readme is no longer in this directory, but if we ls ksh, it's in this one. So if we want to move it back, we can do that right the dot is convenient here because we just want to specify the current directory and that's the easiest way to do it honestly so now the readme is back in this directory when your destination is a directory that you will be moving your file into but not changing the name of you can list multiple files actually um, and they can be files or directories right so let's touch one two three, right, create a couple files, and let's make a directory, and let's make an extra directory as well. Now if we move one, two, three, and extra into dest, then as you can see those have all gone from the current directory, and they've been moved into the destination directory without changing their names inside the destination directory. Uh, that's it for move. Um, copy is pretty much the same thing, right? Um, you can do cp, well, let's cd into dest, and we can cp one to one dot back. Create a backup file of it. Um, if I echo, well, let's do something a little different here to demonstrate this. Um, <clears throat> let's copy that readme file again. Okay, and we can use uh, diff to see if those two files have any differences. And they don't. Uh, if I echo hello and append it to readme.back, then you can see that the diff command does show that there's a difference between the two. Um, but notice that removing readme, uh, you know, does not remove or readme.back does not remove the regular readme. So that's pretty much it for copying as well. The only thing left to talk about is things that I've already shown you how to do in the course of showing, talking about other commands, right? Like using touch to create a file, using make dir to create a directory, using remove dir to remove a directory, right? So I could try remove dir on dest, but it won't work because destination, because dest is not empty, right? If I want to remove everything in a directory and the directory itself, I can do rm-r for dest and do f if I don't want to get asked every time if there's like more than three files, right? Um, so if there's a certain number of files in the directory, it'll ask you before it deletes all of them, but <clears throat> In this case, it doesn't. Um, the one thing that I will say about RM uh, is that it 
really just removes the association between the name of the file and the inode number, right? So if you have multiple names referring to the same file, uh, which you can do with the ln command, you can see that the inode number for readme link and readme is the same. So what that means is that if I rm readme, nothing has changed, right? All of that data is still in the readme link, right? So if I move readme link to readme, nothing has changed in the directory at all. And to prove this to you, I'll show you that by copying readme first, and then making a link to it, you can see that removing readme and then diffing read link and readme dot back produces no difference. So what you need to do if you really want to make sure that the data is no longer referenceable from the operating or you know <coughs> uh, after you've deleted it is you need to make sure that there is only a single or that this number right here is one in the long listing of the file. And that means that there's only one reference to that inode in the file system. Directories always have more than one. You don't really have to worry about it with directories um, because if you rm-rf uh, a directory, the only things that are hard links are the parent directory references in all of the child directories of that directory. So anyway, uh, that's it for this one. Hopefully uh, you can start playing around managing files, creating them, removing them, copying them, all that fun stuff now. So hit like if you liked this video, hit dislike if you didn't like it. In either case, let me know in the comments down below why. Uh, if you have any questions, criticisms, concerns, leave those in the comments as well. And as always, if you want to get notified when I make new videos, hit subscribe. Thanks. Peace.